I? You sure you want to know? The story of my life is not for the faint of heart. If somebody said it was a happy little tale, if somebody told you I was just your average, ordinary guy, not a care in the world, somebody lied. Oh, what now? Oh, now that was a... <laughs> oh, brother, this guy stinks! Okay, Whew, there we go. Hey, hey guys, it's, it's, it's recording, right? Okay, let's see. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much there. It's your friendly neighborhood host, that guy Frankie. You are truly right. coming at you with a brand new video, but what exactly are we gonna be talking about in this video? Are we gonna be discussing the one movie to end all trilogies, to end my final review on Army of Darkness in the Evil Dead trilogy? Am I finally going to be talking about Barbenheimer, the double feature that nobody expected since the likes of Animal Crossing x Doomslayer? Actually, don't look it up that way. That That's... No, no, don't look it up that way. Am I finally dropping Cringeverse Episode 4 for most of you OG That Guy Frankie fans? Also, no. Hey. Hey, come on now. Hey, come on now. Let me at least see the good. This is what I will instead be talking about the fan series that has everyone in a chokehold right now, and that is Spider-Man and the Monsters in Manhattan. As Spider-Man fans, let's be completely honest here, a good amount of us really, truly do not know what we want with this character. While we tend to attack creators for messing up certain things or certain continuity events with our favorite characters, whether it's Spider-Man One More Day, the Clone Saga ruining characters like Ben Riley, or you know, the current track record of comics is just really bad and while there have been some good things coming out about them like retconning certain events that should have never happened but still somehow did and they still somehow missed the mark, we tend to try and be open to new projects outside of the comic book world and the MCU as well. This is where fan films and fan series step in. Now while they tend to get hated on and shat on by a majority of film bros who've yet to embark on making films themselves and live in a basement or if you're poor like me, we live in a tiny home. Uh, this is self-deprecating humor for me so just uh, move along if you will. Move along sir. A good amount of fan films however can be revolutionary even with the smallest budget attached to them. We've seen countless fan films have the fan base in a chokehold, whether it's the beautiful and intense Green Goblin Last Stand to a callback of the classic Golden Age and Silver Age of comics, that being Spider-Man Cake Day, to a bold film such as Miles, a Spider-Man fan film. You can tell that there's this love that many of us have for the fan films, the fan series, whether it's on the lowest budget possible to helping others make a cinematic-esque movie. We want to see stories of our favorite wall-crawling menace do well, and I love the shared passion and joy many of us have when it comes to it because we only want to see that character succeed and do better in the media that we currently have with them. And I'm not saying that the current media, at least in the MCU, you know, it's it's, it's doing all right now with No Way Home, but the way that the current track record of Spider-Man is, it's very 50-50. The character is not getting the love that we think he deserves, but at least with fan films and fan series, it's an escape because many people do try their best to show their love, show their passion for this character. But now, where am I going with this? And here, I'll tell you. I'll just tell you. Look at this movie. Or, you know, look at this series. Look at the series. Look at it. Look. Are you looking at it? Look at it. It's so beautiful. I've done my fair share of research on this movie. What did you say? I keep saying movie. So, sorry. 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 All right. I'm sorry. I've done my fair share of research on this project. And I can tell you, it looks to be spectacular pun intended hilarious and original <laughs> but what is the story on this series going to be about what can we expect from this series 
After putting in the man hours, making, you know, the editor-in-chief do all the work, I'm sorry, I'm gonna make sure you get out of the biscuit That's factory right. later on, Spider-Man and the Monsters in Manhattan is directed by Brandon Mello, a 23-year-old over-caffeinated actor as his Instagram suggests, as well as being a writer for the series, including playing Peter Parker and Spider-Man himself. Goddamn, this man is doing more than me. What the hell am I doing at 22 years old? Moving on, the series is also set to be written by other writers such as Eddie Possible, Justin S. Blackburn, and Alex Iascon, which by the way, if I mispronounce your guys' last names, you have the right to have me in a cage for three minutes, so go on, I'll take this L, I'll take this beating, I truly deserve it. I am sorry. Sorry. This film's premise is centered around a year one Spider-Man. In the teenage years, his life isn't so simple trying to balance the life of being just an ordinary teenager it's also being new york's finest new york's one and only spider-man life has only been getting complicated for him however as he's not just haunted by the death of his uncle ben but by his past as it's up to him to confront his past and battle the likes of kingpin and his criminal underworld to the likes of shocker played by jaime costa as well as one horrifying monster, one that lurks around Manhattan, waiting to strike, waiting for its next victim. <gasps> this is Scorpion. And also, get this, get this, get this, check this, check this. There will be other key characters in this five part episodic series, ranging from Nick Fury to Black Widow and it's being rumored on their Indiegogo page that if they get more help they will have more cameos in this series. One cameo that has me in a chokehold because I haven't heard of this name since high school. The name Danny Shepard. Danny Lachep. For those that don't know this is a man that was part of East Mahawk. I'm pretty sure he still is but East Mahawk that was my high school years growing up from minute matchups to the East Mahawk podcast what's up yeah I still remember I still have my sweater that my sister got me for Christmas all those years ago thank you my dorky sister I love ya Danny Lachep is rumored to be playing Iron Man and I am excited to see that happen also, this audio is going to sound bad because this is future me editing at this point. Future me is already kind of messing up the video, messing up the time scheme and everything. But I wanted to add one more villain involved in the making of this series. And that is none other than the Rhino himself. And yeah, I did not know Rhino was going to be in here. I forgot that the IMDB listed a bunch of other villains such as Martin Lee and countless others. But the Rhino is one that I was surprised to hear about, especially after coming into communication with the actor playing the Rhino himself, none other than John Stoneface Quinlan as he goes by on Instagram and just judging by the brief conversation that I got to have with him, this man is bringing in the A-game for the role. So John, again, Thank you for our brief conversations together. I cannot wait to see your performance as Rhino. I am sure as hell it is going to be spectacular. Pun intended. Boo this man! No! Even more interesting, after messaging the page Spidey Monsters, however, is the universe that this series will be set in. At first, I was confused after seeing the trailer because I didn't know if this was actually going to be in the Raimi universe or its own separate entity as Spider-Man in this universe has that Sam Raimi, Tobey Maguire suit. But after messaging the page, I come to find out that this is that shared universe that many of us fans wanted pre-MCU. This is the original MCU if Marvel had all the entities with one studio back in the day. Just picture it. The X-Men. Uh, Should I call you Logan Weapon X? No, Wolverine, snickety, snickety, snoring. The Fantastic Four, right before Chris Evans became Captain America. Look, check it out, listen, listen. Look, look. It's clobbering time! Oh, you gotta be shitting me. To the likes of even Ghost Rider, right before Nick Cage added a Dead by Daylight and before the Skull memes popped up, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll post them right here, right now for you. 
This is a universe many of us wished to have seen if it weren't for Meddling Studios, which by the way, we might be able to see in Deadpool 3 and Secret Wars, but yeah, who knows, so let, let's give this show uh, uh, a close eye, because this is really, really interesting. As their Indiegogo also suggests, they're trying to capture the Raimi magic, giving us nostalgia while also trying to mix the styles of Cobra Kai and Stranger Things action horror. Too sweet. With a runtime average of 30 minutes per episode, this show is surely going to pack a punch. I did not just quote Dead Meat right there with the way that he says his runtime average in his videos. Please don't sue me. I think George Lucas gonna sue somebody. Now, while most fan films don't have special effects, it's not necessarily a bad thing as it goes to show the struggle and hardships they went through and how they managed to pull off the unthinkable. But even then, they try and try their best to make special effects either with green screen or making it at their home films again, like Green Goblin's Last Stand where passion oozed on screen. Shut your to other films and edits by the likes of Nero does stuff who by the way if you haven't seen his stuff already he is quite gifted and old oh man I wish you guys did that spider-man new animated series that my friend Boris told me about because I would have thrown money at the wall no don't pull no ah! Done amazing videos like Spider-Man Ordinary as well as remastering Peter's web against the Sinister Six. It's not so much the quality that I tend to go for, more so the effort and the passion, the creating force behind the films that generate and push for that. And that's exactly what I'm seeing with Brandon Mello's Spider-Man and the Monsters of Manhattan series. Somehow, someway, this man and his crew pulled a WWE when they brought in Cody Rhodes in that sense that they brought in the likes of Rashad Santiago who at first I didn't know about until I dug deeper. Rashad Santiago, I'm pretty sure I'm misspelling your name also, please feel free to kick my ass at the end of this video. Santiago is a special effects artist who not only worked on epic monstrous creatures from the likes of Stranger Things' Demogorgon but was also featured on shows like Face Off from the Sci-Fi Channel. He's also made his own Predator suit with a working and functional mask to other fan films and shorts ranging from the likes of Nightmare, The Killing Joke. He is a director on his own end as well with films like The Kiyomachi Project and Terror From Beyond and serves as a practical effects and makeup effects artist and does a superb job with every job he takes on. Yeah. Brandon and the crew want this film to have that classic Raimi feel and instead of relying heavily on CGI, they want Santiago involved to give it that magic, that spark, that creativity behind it. Even if it means they're gonna go through all these struggles, it'll still be worth it. The effects by far also, just judging by the trailer alone, feel amazing. Whether it's the first person POV swinging scene or a scene eerily similar to Miles falling in into the Spider-Verse, you can tell they're definitely bringing in their A-game with these effects. But what do I want? What do I want? What do I want from this series? With this series being a five episodic saga, five episodic series, five, it's a five part series, all right? There can be some bumps on the road, the runtime is set to be 30 minutes on average, and some issues that can play a factor are either pacing, writing, or acting, and it's inevitable whether it's a film or fan film, but it's just how you go about it, how you pick yourself up from it. And now, Brandon is no stranger to fan films and fan series, as this man is a gifted individual, making other fan films even before Spider-Man and the Monsters of Manhattan was even in the works. He's done the Web of Spider-Man concept pilot, a 30, almost 30 minute episode, and it's done fairly well. So this man knows exactly what he's doing. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be an all time classic. But going back to the question, what do I want? What do I want to see? 
I want the episodes to feel special and try and elevate one another. With the story being set in year one, Peter is still struggling and haunted by the death of his uncle, haunted by his past, haunted by his demons, while also learning to balance his personal life and his superhero identity. This man is going through quite the crisis at an early age. More than I could even attend in high school, because holy shit, you can tell already that this is going to be one hell of a ride. I'm hoping that this series does try its best to capture the Spider-Man that they're going for. I want them to give us a confused and troubled Peter Parker, whether it's scenes with his friends, talking about school and life, or nearly being caught as Spider-Man. We need special moments to keep the story afloat and create memorable moments for us to remember. Spider-Man and the Monsters in Manhattan has this giant cast and I'm hoping that the runtime is more than enough to give each character screen time, otherwise it'll be too many cooks in the kitchen just like WWE and AEW having these bloated rosters and not knowing what to do with certain wrestlers cause man just, just book them right! G give me more LA Knight! Just, just give me more LA Knight please! You f***ing mark! Will Spider-Man be able to fight off all of these villains? while maintaining his regular, average Joe life, or will he fail, fall, die trying? One of the main themes that this film is also set to tackle is unity. After our brief interactions, Spidey Monsters had mentioned that the film is going to tackle other messages and themes, but they want to focus on unity as a whole. While not telling me too much as to not spoil or give out too much information out there, unity is going to be a recurring element throughout the film, so it is safe to say that there will be tension among certain characters and relationships will be put to the test. Aside from the themes, however, there will be more cameos in this film. Keep your eyes peeled, because you'll never know who just might be in the impact zone. The Amazing Spider-Man! <laughs> I'm kidding. With the film... Still able to be back, there is no telling when it's set to drop, especially with the writer's strike going on as Brandon and the crew have said in DMs that they are for the strike and want to respect the brothers and sisters in arms. All I can say is be patient. But if this project does delay multiple times like a film I know, I'm locking them in the cage and throwing my hands at them like my name is Bone McGraw because man, I do not need another Spider-Man 4 delay. For any fan film or film out there, I I I I can't I can't I can't I can't take another a moment like that, please! I can't have another canon event like that, please! I do also want to mention I'm not sure who's behind the page, whether it's Brandon Mello or a friend or crew member, but thank you guys so much for actually reaching out and answering all my questions in the dead of night when you didn't need to, especially because I'm pretty sure I got annoying with some memes every now and then, just trying to be funny, you know that's that's how I am. But yeah, thank you guys again for actually reaching out to me answering any questions I had. I really do appreciate that. I'm hoping that this fan film, or I keep saying fan film again, damn it! I'm hoping that this fan series gains more eyes and gets traction as they not only managed to hit over 200,000 views on their first trailer alone, but have been backed by YouTube giants, the video essay community, by legends like High Top Films. So again, thank you, and I can't wait to see what this film has in store, but before this video ends, let me talk to you. Yeah! If you guys want to see your friendly neighborhood host interview the likes of Brandon Mello, give me a hell yeah and tag them in the comments here or on their Insta, and I mean it. If you want to see me put them on the hot seat and tell us more about the film story and what drove them to make it, please comment and get him to notice. Give me what I want! because this would make a legendary video between the midget and Brandon Mello, the 23-year-old over-caffeinated actor. Please, let this dream match happen. But yeah, as always, I've been your friendly neighborhood host, that guy Frankie. Yours truly, swinging off. <laughs>
No cringe bears. No cringe bears. No cringe bears.